Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do tonight, and I apologize if the videos seem like they're a little jumpy, because they are. Um, I am only have a few hours a day currently to be working on this. I have roll bars, I have, you know, it was Memorial Day weekend, we had family stuff going on, so I didn't have time to do a lot on this car this week. But tonight, we are going to be pulling this intake manifold. It already loosens all the bolts and everything. So, as a if you're a BMW guy, you know these M52s, S52s, the intake manifolds, I believe, are 60% more restrictive than the older style M50 intake manifold, which is what this is. Now, my buddy David Jankowski from Jericho Motorsports up in Illinois, I believe, he sent me this. He's one of these guys, he's just totally badass. I said, hey bud, uh, looking for a M50 intake manifold. He says, yeah, I think I got one. He puts it in the mail the next day, it shows up. We hustle some parts together. I build them a G-Trag 420 um, transmission bracket. We work out a couple bucks and everything's cool. So he's just an awesome guy to deal with. He sent me an intake manifold, throttle body, um, you know, the boots whack, but that's totally cool. But it has, you know, some fittings and stuff. So, I mean, this is just, this is just an awesome deal. So this is going to be going on that. So I'm gonna just see what I can do about popping this off right now. Now, I think we have a lot of issues going on with vacuum lines and just rubber going south on us. I mean, this was just a vacuum line on a fuel rail. It just broke right off. So, um, it's gonna be good to pull this. I'm going to inspect every vacuum line, every fuel line, all that stuff as we go. I was hoping it wasn't gonna be in this bad a shape, but it is. And you know what, at the end of the day, it's gonna give us an opportunity to go through everything and make sure everything's 100% and where it should be. So yeah, so I'll pop this off and we'll take a look at what's going on under here. We're gonna delete the CCV valve, which is the crankcase ventilation. I already pulled the, where was it? The DISA valve off of it. This one actually functions. Usually these DISA valves will give you all sorts of problems. Uh, this just pops right in here. And what it does is it regulates airflow um, in the intake there. And this thing will seize on people. Uh, worst case scenario, this will break apart, get brittle, break apart, and then travel through the engine. So these are super common problems on M52s, M54s. Um, so just keep an eye on these. I'm sure if you've, you've heard of these, you'll hear something called Disa rattle. This thing will just be flopping around in there. This one actually looks good. It has the spring back, but we're gonna get rid of that because it's junk and it doesn't work with our M50 intake anyhow. We'll clean it up the best we can and we will get that M50 manifold back on and hopefully get this car up and running again. I have a feeling there's something why it's running so bad is that there is something big, a huge massive vacuum leak in here somewhere. So I'm sure we'll find it, like I said. I mean, this hose right here just fell apart. I mean, that's a that's a very big vacuum leak. So uh, there might be that, there might be a few other ones. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, check them. I mean, look at this. This is, it's, you know, this whole thing's just crumbling apart. Just like the dash, just ripped. <laughs> Just brittle and ripped apart. It's craziness. I never seen never seen anything like it. To be honest with you, uh, you know, even E30s and stuff, which I'm used to working on, they are more more resilient than this thing is. So, oh man, all right, it's looking like it's ready to come off. This thing's a dirty car too, so I gotta get some uh, Georgia Super Clean action over here. Maybe he can loan me a bottle, but um. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, I'm not gonna lie. It's been quite, quite some time. So, okay, we are hung up on, what do we got? Oh, I forgot to do the fuel lines. Oh yeah, fuel lines, what am I thinking? Chewing that dum dum gum. Here we go. It's 
Oops, oh. All right. That's the old one out. Not as fun as I remember. So, we're going to delete a bunch of crap. As you can see here, I left a fuel rail. I wanna just inspect. That's a EVAP purge. So we're gonna delete the EVAP. These fuel lines seem pretty soft. Don't look too bad in here. What I'll do is vacuum and clean all this out. We will, we're gonna just get rid of pretty much a lot of this junk. We'll clean it all up. We're just gonna go through and make sure everything's okay with all of our lines and everything. So we definitely had a stuck idle control valve. I mean, it was stuck, stuck. I think that was giving us a lot of our issues. But also things like, I mean, this, I mean, that's just insulation, but that's in rough shape. We have our crankcase ventilation. We're gonna delete that. Um, yeah, you hear that? I mean, all this crap is super brittle. So, look, we got a busted off line there. So I think we had multiple vacuum leaks, which was really causing the, uh, the issue here. So you can see the simplicity between the two is pretty dramatic. And also look at the size of these intake runners here. They are much larger than these little guys. I mean, like I said, these are about 60% larger. So this, you can pick these up for about a hundred bucks. These M50 OBD1 intake manifolds, they flow so much better, uh, especially in turbo applications like what we're doing. This thing's gonna hold up just fine. We have to swap over the injectors. Um, for now, I am, you know, I am going to turbo this motor, but for now I wanna swap everything over and just get it all running and get everything uh, baseline. So I wanna make it run naturally aspirated, make sure it runs well naturally aspirated, Make sure we're not gonna be chasing any issues because once you turbocharge and start adding boost to it, you're gonna find any weak spots, any vacuum lines that you forgot about or didn't replace or anything like that's gonna be exacerbated and give you big problems. So I wanna make sure everything's sealed up and buttoned up good uh, in naturally aspirated form and then we can start getting wild with it. Okay, before we can get the M50 manifold on, we have to do a couple things. First is, you see these holes here in the head? Those need to be plugged. So we're going to tap those with an eighth inch pipe tap and thread in a eighth inch flush mounted pipe plug. That will give us a nice seal there and those will be all plugged up and we won't alter the head really in any, any way. Second is, this is the M50 intake manifold port so this is the gasket for one of them. And what we need to do, obviously you can see the difference. So these are kind of like a, you know, I don't know what you'd call that shape, but that's the shape those are. And these are a nice oval shape. So what I'm going to do is take a deburring tool, which is what we have here. And we're going to smooth in uh, these edges. We're going to trace it out with a sharpie and then we're going to take this deburring tool with a die grinder and just get right on in there. We're not going to get crazy. We're not going way down inside or anything like that. We're just going to match these for now. So the first thing to do, and I've done this before, it works. It's not ideal. It's obviously better to have the head off and do it that way, but you can see inside there, that is our intake valves. What you need to do Make sure those valves are closed. That's a very important step. Close those valves. That way nothing gets in the cylinder. Then what we do is I go and clean this all up. I have a uh, shop vac 
and I made this little uh, extension so this can go get right on in there and suck up any crap that might fall in there. But what we do is once this, once this is all clean, I stuff rags in the ports, okay? And once, once the rags are stuffed in the ports, then what we're gonna do is do our deburring all while having the vacuum there at the same time. So we're gonna vacuum and deburr at the same time or vacuum and port, port match really at the same time. And then at the end, we'll pull that out, vacuum it, visually inspect, make sure everything's good, make sure there's no crap in there, blow it out with air, do everything to make sure it's super clean. And then we'll block that one up and move on to the next one. In the diesel world, we've done this for a walnut blasting. So it actually works really well for that too. Um, it's the same philosophy. If you know, you just gotta be careful. You gotta take your time with it. And it's like I said, it's not ideal. And we're only gonna go about to here. And we're only gonna go about to here, about an inch in. We're not getting way deep in there or anything crazy right now. If we decide to, or when we blow a head gasket, which I'm sure will be inevitable, we will then address getting way in there and doing some real nice port work on this engine. But until then, we're just gonna make these match and it's something we can do while it's in the car. We're gonna drape this all off with plastic or a, um, a blanket or something like that so we don't get aluminum and crap all in there. And we're just gonna start going to town. It'll probably take about an hour to get all these done and it's going to, uh, it's going to work well. So you'll see the end result in a few minutes here. So to recap, this is going to be my setup. So I stuffed two rags way down tight into the port, into the um, valve area. Then I have this piece of um, paper towel stuffed real tight in there. And now we're just gonna start going to town. Like I said, it's not ideal, but it will get us our uh, our end result, and I will show you exactly how it's going to look once this one's done. Okay, we're half done here. Halfway mark. Probably been working on about a half an hour. But you can see. See, I didn't go crazy. But, as opposed to that, it's significant. So, I probably wound up taking off about a quarter inch on either side. And like I said, I'm just gradually tapering it down. Nothing crazy. Um, that will come, I actually think I might try to find a spare head and go nuts with it in my, you know, if I have free time. I'll really go crazy porting it and polishing the exhaust and all that stuff. That'd be pretty, uh, that'd be a pretty fun thing. I really haven't done much of that kind of stuff. So it'd be fun practice. And, you know, I think I can score ahead for a couple bucks. So it's, it, it would be, uh, it'd be some fun to practice on. I think, you know, I can find one of these whole motors for, oh geez, I don't know, 300 bucks at a junkyard. So they're not anything rare. That's for sure. So, yep, I'm just gonna, Knock out the last three and that will be done. Okay, so up next we have to tap these holes. I'm gonna use eighth inch NPT pipe tap, but first I'm going to place a little rag in here. And what we'll do, we'll tap that. So now that's in there. So we'll tap this. It doesn't have to be much. The plugs are very small. Uh, they're actually arriving tomorrow. So we'll tap it about a half inch in there and then we will fish out, fish out that rag with a pick, but that will allow us not to get any crud and material down into the uh, hole there. So we're gonna do that on all six of these right now. Okay, so we have our pipe tap. I put a little multi-purpose grease on here uh, that helps grab the chips um, and it also helps the tapping process. So these holes are actually look like just the right size for this pipe tap. So. Being an aluminum head. Well, this is actually aluminum head and block, but the block doesn't matter in this application. 
it's going to be pretty easy to tap these. So what I'll do now is just clean out that hole, uh, vacuum it out, and then I'll pull my rag out. That's one down. So that took about what, maybe a minute. And I'm just gonna repeat that process and then we'll uh, thread in our plugs and those with that part of the job will be done there. Just noting a few things here. So we got our port match done. We have our holes tapped. So this is all to put an M50 OBD1 manifold onto a M52 TU, which is what this is. There's a couple other things we have to do. Um, you don't need to do this for the manifold swap, but I'm going to do a few elective things because this will be turbocharged. There is this uh, plug here. This is the brake booster check valve. There is this hose that goes to the intake boot. I'm deleting that because that would create a pressure situation to the brake booster, which we don't want. So that's getting deleted. So we are also gonna delete the CCV on here. Let me just show you what that is real quick. This is the crankcase ventilation system. So this essentially is the breather from the valve cover and there is a hose from the dipstick tube that go to this and it recirculates this into the intake. We don't want that. Uh, especially in a boosted application. Even in a non-boosted application, these things are just a total pain in the butt uh, to deal with. They stick, They in the cold weather, they freeze. Uh, big problem on M54s in freezing weather, these things will freeze and essentially siphon all the oil out of your oil pan from the dipstick tube. It'll siphon all your oil out, dump it into the intake manifold, and hydro-lock your motor. I actually had that happen. I bought it for cheap money, but that's what happened to it, and they thought it was a blown motor, but it was just a bad CCV, and it, it hydro-locked the cylinders with oil. Thank God it didn't bend any rods or anything. But this goes to the bottom of that valve I just showed you. And that was, I had it just off. I just wanted to show you where it went. This goes right down into the dipstick tube right here. So we're gonna take that, we're just gonna cap that off, and that gets rid of our CCV setup. We're also got rid of the secondary air pump. I believe I showed you that. We capped it off right here, and it ran hoses, and it went over into here. The secondary air pump, that runs for about, I don't know, 15, 30 seconds when the engine's first on, and what it does is it uh, is an emissions thing that helps get more airflow through the catalytic converters on cold starts. We don't need that, and we just are getting rid of it. So simplicity is the key on this thing. We're gonna get as rid of much crap as possible that we don't need. Um, the EVAP system, I am going to just leave that vented to atmosphere. We're not gonna be using, we're not gonna be connecting the EVAP system to the manifold. And what else? Oh, also, that's what I want to say. I was gonna run the idle control valve. So I freed it up, this was stuck, and I think this was giving me a lot of problems with it running on the old setup. But what I think I'm going to do instead is just plug, this is where the idle control valve would go. I'm gonna create a cap on this, I'll put some sealer on there, and I think I'm just gonna plug this right off and not even use this. Um, I've had a lot of help from online from a buddy of mine, Corey Dalba from Gulf Coast European Motorsports. He is a BMW guru and he's done, he's got multiple turbo BMWs. He's done, he, you know, meth injection and he's done stuff like, he does stuff like this on a daily basis. So I haven't boosted an M52 before. I've never done the M50 manifold swap on an M52 TU. So he's just kind of, you know, helping me out with different ideas and different ways to go. But as of right now, that's what I think we'll do. He said, all I'll have to do is just adjust the idle screw on the throttle body. And then I can um, just crack it open just a tiny bit, just to let that airflow, let it idle about a thousand RPM and I'll be just fine. So I think I'll do that. This will just eliminate more problems 
with boost issues, potential boost leaks, anything like that, we'll just get rid of it. We'll see how bad it, it, or how well it does. If it runs like crap, we can always just, you know, pop this out or create another port or something. That's not the end of the world. So we'll see how it does and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But as of now, I'm gonna try to delete it and see how it goes. Oh, also, I don't know if I've shown you this yet. So, I'm a cheapskate and I decided to make our own throttle body uh, adapter. So this is gonna be the adapter right now. I'm just drilling holes and I'm gonna drill and tap for these. This will adapt our throttle body, our M52 throttle body to our M50 manifold. So as you can see, the bolt patterns are different. So I'm gonna drill and tap that. We'll get the hole drilled in the center and that will be our adapter plate. You can buy these, They're, they'll be a lot nicer finish than these, they'll be all anodized and stuff, but I don't care about any of that, I just need it to work and it's a function. So this is just, uh, I think it's what, 3 8 um, 3 8 aluminum and that's, that's about that. So that's our adapter plate for our manifold. Okay, right now I'm just test fitting the manifold. I just want to make sure everything clears. One thing I did notice was this uh, heater valve is, it's actually gonna go away because I'm, I'm pulling out the whole heat unit, but it was hitting here. So if you have a Z3, it might hit here. And also the, the power steering reservoir has to be moved back. So I just pivoted it on the front mount and we can make a tab for that later. So the M52 just has these extra studs here in the manifold. And naturally, the M50 manifold does not have those. So they need to come out in order for the M50 to work. And these are blind holes. So you don't have to worry about plugging them up with anything because there's no oil passage or coolant passage or anything behind them. And now, we'll see. Perfect. So as you can see, there's plenty of room here. Um, the other manifold stuck out a good amount more. Now let me get my throttle body, because that's why I wanted to test fit this real quick. So this is the M52 factory throttle body. I just wanted to make sure everything lined up and looked, looked proper on it, and there was enough room to have an elbow here. So that's gonna be tight there. Okay, it is a little bit of a squeeze there. Because my other thought was to run the throttle body, you know, something like this. But I'm not sure. So I'm gonna have to kind of think about, ponder this one a little bit. Because I was thinking about just running a throttle body, extending the throttle cable and running like that. But let me see what an elbow looks like on here. Like I said, it's gonna be tight to here. And I'm not thrilled about that. I don't wanna have a super tight bend right before there, but all this can go away, that's not a problem. And also, this manifold might rise, it probably look more like that, so. Okay, well, I think it's gonna fit. Either way, this is gonna kinda have to be our, our throttle body set up um, just to show you the difference and why I was concerned. You can see the thickness difference. So there's almost like another inch and a half with the plate and the throttle body compared to the factory M50 OBD2 throttle body. I'm sorry, OBD1 throttle body. So I don't know if I can run this because this has the that set up there with the throttle with the throttle positioning sensor and all that in there. So I'm not sure if I can run it, run the old one on here. I'll have to reach out to a friend. Maybe I can just take an elbow. Here, let me see. I just had this one laying around. You know, imagine that being a 90 and just have the throttle body. I mean, Craig, I could have it anywhere. Or I think what Vlad was telling me, switch to a M54 uh, fly-by-wire throttle body and not have to worry about any of this. I can just, it'll all be electronic, so I can put the throttle body really anywhere. 
and just have, you know, something like that. So maybe that's the answer. I'll have to talk to him, get a parts list on how to do that. But that's not going to happen right now. But that's just, you know, I'm just thinking out loud here and trying to prepare for the future to make sure, you know, when we go turbo this thing, I'm not sitting here scratching my head wondering why, you know, I can't get stuff to work. I mean, I could do a just an aluminum 90, a really tight one with like pie cuts, but I'm really not thrilled about doing that. And if I can get a larger throttle body, that'd be great too. So let me see what I can do on that. That's all, if you got any ideas, if anybody's watching this has any ideas of how we can make this better, or if I could do a, you know, a throttle body off of something else that's a much larger di diameter. This is, geez, I think it's 64 millimeter, something like that. So this is OD right here is three inch, just as a rough number. So this is a, more or less a three inch throttle body. So if we get something big that would work, that I could make work on this setup, that's awesome. Um, doing a fly-by-wire conversion, I'm totally into that. That's totally cool. So yeah, let's just, uh, just thinking about it here. If you guys have any suggestions, certainly let me know. Okay, another hurdle that I just wanna discuss. I'm headed to the hardware store real quick. I need some flush mount screws for my throttle body plate. And I need a couple, what do I need? A cap for uh, my dipstick tube. Now, this is the air intake temperature sensor that goes on the old M52 manifold. So this is just a push fitting. This is the M50 air intake temperature sensor. You can see it threads in, okay? Now, to get this into here, we can do one of two things. We can thread, we can take this O-ring off and we can actually cut some M12 by 1.5 threads and that will thread in there, no problem. I do wanna show you what I got done just a few minutes ago. I got my adapter plate finished. I ordered up a silicone elbow, which should be in early next week. But as you can see, this adapter plate came out pretty good. So I also went to the hardware store and what I was gonna do is use this spacer, or it's just a piece of tubing, and it, it's almost a compression fit in there and I was just gonna seal it up. But I thought one better I found a piece of one inch pipe that actually the threads start to grab on here. So what I'm almost thinking is if I get this super hot, I'll actually be able to thread it in there and thread the intake manifold. All right, just got the manifold adapter plate bolted to the throttle body. So that's all good. And now I'm working on these uh, fuel rail brackets. I know I talked about them earlier, but here they are. So I just put a little slight kink in them. You don't need any fancy tools to do this. I did this with a vise and a hammer. Not a big deal. A couple holes in them. And you'll see they sit like that and you almost want them over bent a little bit. And if they're over bent, it will actually put more downward pressure on this fuel rail, which is what you want. You want is, you know, a nice firm seat on everything here. And before you make these, make sure your fuel rail is actually pushed down and tight. Um, so when you make these, you know, you don't have one side popped up or anything goofy like that. Some guys do a flat plate and just add a spacer here. That's cool, that works. But, you know, for me, it's just as easy to do that. And then when I ever have to uh, take this off, I don't wind up losing little tiny custom spacers and this and that. So that's just the way I did it. There's multiple ways to achieve the same target, but that's that. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. As you can see, as you can see, there's actually a lot involved in this. And now I know I mentioned before, this is my first time doing an M52TU M50 intake manifold swap. So I'm actually learning as we go on this and I'm crossing my fingers that it's gonna work. It's gonna be fine. I know it's gonna work. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's, it's a lot harder than I, I shouldn't say harder. 
it's a lot more time consuming and a lot more involved than I anticipated. I was like, yeah, hey, we'll just, you know, you make a little bracket for the throttle body and a couple things for the fuel rail and call it a day. I didn't really factor in the fact that you do have to port match and then you have to tap the holes and then, you know, the throttle body sticks out and on the Z3, it hits the, it hits the sh strut tower. You know, there's like all these little things that I didn't really think about that are coming into play, which none of them are a big deal. It's just like any kind of job. I mean, you're just gonna run into these hurdles. You adapt to these hurdles and overcome the issues that you have and just make it happen. So that's where we're at right now. This is what I was saying before about the air intake temperature sensor. So I need to thread this somehow. So essentially I'm trying to make this piece of plastic look like this. So my thought is I'm going to grind down this area here. Right, all this meat you see here, I'm gonna to try to grind that down to get to about that size. And then I'm going to run the die over it. And it will cut these threads like butter. It's pretty hot. I don't want to touch the... Okay. Oh, that's definitely hot. Oh, would you look at that? It actually worked. There you go. Just threads right in here. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really cool. I'm glad that worked out. All right, guys. Not sure if this is gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Let's see. Definitely melting, but I think it might be too hot. Yeah, I think it might be too hot. Okay, so that proved to be too hot. So I'm gonna scrape some of this out. And what it was doing was just melting and just spinning. So the threads weren't grabbing. They were just so hot that it melted. All right, we had to work quick. So I apologize, I didn't get it on film, but we got this right in there. So I heated this up. The first shot, as you saw, was too hot. And as soon as I hit the plastic, it just melted it. So it was not grabbing any of the threads. Second time around, I gave a little heat to the plastic to soften up the plastic a little bit and I let that plug cool down and it started to go in, but it came in at, it wanted to go in at an angle. So what I had to do is just take my grinder here and just ground out a little bit of the back side because it was hanging up on a lip. So it was hitting a lip and wanted to do this thing. So I just gave that a little bevel and now it went straight in. You know, this is a one inch pipe so uh, as a lot of you know, pipe threads are actually tapered. So the more you tighten it, the tighter it gets. So we're at the point now where I can't really tighten it anymore. And it looks pretty straight in there. It might be a little cockeyed, but I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I think we're in business. So I'm gonna blow out the manifold. I kind of did it in a hasty hurry here just because I didn't want everything to cool down and have to start from scratch. So we had to go back to the drawing board a little. So what I did is I, we are now having to run the idle control valve because I was talking to Vlad and he said that is a hundred percent giving me those problems where I stab the throttle, nothing happens. It won't even really rev up. It just kind of 
hovers and fluctuates and idle and it just it's not it's not happening so we cut the threads with our pipe here that we had yesterday with our m12 uh, nut welded on the inside so that's not going to work however i was able to get a plastic one inch pipe thread with a hose uh, barb on it so this is going to thread right in there so what i'm going to do is actually clean up some rtv that i had in there just to seal this one and i'm going to uh i'll probably just plastic weld it right in place that way it's never going to be a problem so that's our that's our solution there and then this uh, i left long this is just going to go to the uh, intake elbow somewhere so that hopefully should solve our issues with it running Idle control valve installed. Here's that barb fitting with a pipe. This is a plastic fitting. I plastic welded it, uh, epoxied it rather, to the manifold so that ain't going anywhere. And that should be totally boost tight. This is gonna go to our intake elbow and I'm going to install this right now and hopefully this little guy will solve our running issues. Okay, back to these plugs real quick. They're just these brass plugs. I got some Teflon tape. Now I did just run this plug in there and it was um, the tap, the holes I tapped, oh, the holes I tapped weren't deep enough. So I had to run the tap back down in there. So I just gave it a couple more threads cause you need to have this. There's a little, little ridge there. You need to have it flush or below the deck or the uh, mating surface here. So that's pretty good. So we're just gonna continue that across the other five and those will be done. Back in the engine bay here, we are actually ready to get that manifold back on. But before that, I'm gonna try to clean some of this up. Uh, this thing's had a head gasket, or not head gasket, I'm sorry, valve cover gasket leak. Uh, pretty significantly and it just has made a mess of this engine. It is so filthy and grimy Definitely needs a needs a good cleanup um, What I just want to show you now is I am going to be deleting this whole heater valve assembly. So This right here comes from the coolant reservoir this line right here leads down into the heater valve the heater valve opens and closes when it needs to and then goes through your heater core inside comes back and loops right around and goes to this hard pipe here so what i'm going to do is cut this band here cut this band here and we'll hose clamp onto the factory push fittings and we'll just i'll just go to AutoZone or something and i'm just going to buy a straight length of hose and i should be able to run like a nice you know sweeping bend from here to here or if I can find one with a 90 or something. I mean, we'll figure it out, it's no big deal. But it'll get rid of this whole assembly. I might be able to unbolt this bracket and it just frees up more room and takes away some weight. And that's that's a proper looking BMW straight six right there. None of this, I mean, look how simple it makes it all under there. I mean, before you can't even get your hand under there. This, there's all sorts of room for activities, so. Well, I'm still scratching my head on this, but like I said, it doesn't matter. This is all we have to do. Pop the cover off, flip them. There you go. We're gonna do each one like that. Super easy fix, takes five seconds. Okay, so there's a couple things about this that are getting weird. So I'm not sure if it's this M50U TU or what the deal is. So anyway, a couple weird things. This injector harness was backwards, right? So it wants to clip in to this side, which you can't do because of the clearance. So I had to pop it and spin all the injector uh, plugs just like we saw. Next thing is this um, throttle body normally on the M50UTU sits under here. So the bracket for the throttle sits about there normally. So we're effectively raising this throttle body up about six inches 
and now we have to figure out how to mount this throttle cable here. We don't have a hood, so it's not a big deal. And I do have something I just whip or uh, am working up right now. So I'm gonna mount it just like that. It's a little goofy, but I think ultimately what we're gonna do is go to the M54 full drive-by wire setup and just call it a day. Okay, got it back together. I just had an issue real quick of it. Um, I put the battery back on and I was being a knucklehead and I accidentally whacked the wrench and it arced out. And then I go to start it and it would just crank, crank, crank nothing. So I was like, oh crap, did I do something stupid? So I called my buddy Vlad just to kind of walk through things with me just to make sure I wasn't being dumb. And all fuses look good, all re relays look good. Turns out this ground wire terminal, this bolt was loose. So, and the reason we found that is the engine temp gauge went to full sweep all the way hot as soon as you turned on the ignition. So that's a, he told me that that's an indication of the engine control unit not getting power. So that was my issue. Last night it ran, I don't know how, but this was loose last night, so it must just have been barely going, but always check your grounds. Um, that's just something silly that I was, you know, I'm, I'm looking to relocate this inside the car. So that was just one of those things where I was just moving this around because I want to clear a bunch of room right here um, for turbo stuff. So always double check your grounds before you start your car because that could have led to, I've had an issue before where I forgot a ground and it melted a harness and it was a whole production. But now that we got that out of the way, Let's see if it will run and idle. Okay, a couple things just to go over. The, I had a ton of codes on here from when the idle control valve was stuck and non-existent. And like I said, I called my buddy Vlad he asked if the EML light was on on the dash, which it was. And that means it was in limp mode. So what I did is I just reset all the codes. And now. Now she fires right up, revs up. Everything looks awesome. I'm excited, it revs up, it doesn't die, it doesn't fall flat in its face once you hit the throttle, so everything looks good. I have another intake boot coming in tomorrow, so all this is gonna be actually civilized looking and proper. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I, uh, I did that about, I don't know, two or three weeks ago at this point, and obviously the car is looking a lot different. I did afterwards replace the fuel pump with a Walbro 450 and the fuel filter. So everything's looking pretty good on it. And what we need to do is, um, I need to get Vlad over here just to get the engine codes and everything because I'm not running a secondary air pump or the um, uh, post-cat O2s or anything like that. So I'm gonna have him come over here and pretty much clean up the whole computer as far as all the codes go. Okay, I had to push it in real quick because it just felt a couple sprinkles. Let me uh, just fire it up real quick for you as I fall into this thing, just so you can see how it's running. And it is, uh, it's already warmed up, so I can rev it. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next episode.